Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and it is Sunday, and we are doing Breaches of the Week, as always. And I'd like to thank a whole bunch of people for tagging me in articles, sending me stuff, and a lot of you alerting me to what's going to be my final thing today, which is Facebook. And oh boy, are we going to dive into them. But I'd like to thank Michael Shank, Debbie Reynolds, Chris Fowlon, Rebecca Rutherford, and Dr. For Christopher Gay. Guys, thank you very much for sending in this stuff. I'm always appreciative and I'm always up for good conversation when it comes to this kind of stuff like security and privacy. But let's dive in because a ton of stuff has happened. And the first one we're going to be talking about here is uh, is basically something called Option Way. Now, they apparently are a flight booking agency. Experts discovered that a huge portion of a database used by Option Way was completely unprotected and unencrypted. And basically, these experts discovered over 100 gigabytes of data, including unencrypted personal details such as date of birth, gender, email addresses, phone numbers, home and address and post code or postcode this is in the uk postcode information and information about users flights and travels arrangements so if you have used option way heads up to you moving on let's talk about poshmark now a few weeks ago i actually did poshmark because they had a data breach uh in early august or so and basically there were 36 million people that were apparently affected by this and uh as most data breaches when they come out they usually make some blanket default statement that says, you know, we have not seen any issues with this data, meaning it's not been used in any way that we can determine. And I usually say that's, you know, they really can't claim that. And here's exactly why. So the platform Have I Been Pwned, which goes into the dark web looking for this, found the Poshmark records. They are now becoming available for sale on the dark web. All the more reason if you are using Poshmark to make sure that you are changing your password. And hopefully Poshmark has this totally locked down now. Moving on, we're going to be heading to uh, back to the UK. There's a, there's a uh, place called, uh, or rather an outfit called Truly Travels. Now, this is basically like a holiday kind of, um, you know, like they, they make holidays for people, travel arrangements, that kind of thing. Over 200,000 customers basically were left exposed uh, in audio files, interestingly enough, for several years. Now, this is one of the interesting things about this. Basically, the way they work is you go to their website, you browse their packages and put everything together, and then you give them a call and they go ahead and process the order and I guess get your holiday or vacation ready for you. However, this is where the problem arose. 212,000 audio calls were found in an unsecured Amazon Web Services server between April 10th and August 10th of 2016. These, this is where these calls were from. So they obviously do quite a bit of business. And this was ex apparently exposed for over three years. So in 2016, if you booked with Truly Travels out of the UK, heads up to you. Moving on, and I'm going to totally butcher the name of this. We're coming out of Germany right now. This is Olden Bergischkisch <laughs> Lands Bank. Basically, it's a bank. And uh, if you are German, I apologize for that. Criminals stole more than 1.5 million euros or 1.65 million dollars out of this German bank by cloning customer debit cards and then cashing out the user funds across Brazil, basically, and this is even despite the user of the original cards having those chips, the EM, EMV chip, and so it's interesting. They found a workaround or the chips weren't secure. Now, the bank has said that only 2,000 customers were impacted. The bank itself wasn't hit. Obviously, user credit cards were and that they've basically refunded the money and they've moved to block all MasterCard debit cards following this attack as they're in the process of issuing uh, new cards. So I'll take another stab at it. But if you use Olden Bersheich Lands Bank, and I think I did a little better that time, heads up to you. Uh, moving on, we're going to be talking about MSPs. These are managed service providers. These are IT companies that offer third-party support for others. We've seen a rash of basically breaches and infections, and these are on the rise. One of these MSPs this week, not named, got hit uh, through ransomware that started disabling backups. They were using Datto, and that affected roughly five of their customers as well. 
data responded to to recover on their end and the MSP locked this down. And as somebody that works with MSPs for cybersecurity consulting, yet there a lot of MSPs just really don't have much cybersecurity, even though they're they're selling it. I find that very interesting. And if you're an MSP watching this and you're doing great in security, good. I'm I'm happy uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, you know, but it seems to really be a mixed bag where I'm seeing you know uh, inadequate cybersecurity solutions being offered, and as a result, here we are. That MSP. P, by the way, was recommended to enable uh, to have an enable two-factor authentication within Datto's network, something they didn't do. That's Cybersecurity 101. So take that for what it's worth. So heads up, MSPs, you guys are under attack. Moving on, we're going to be talking about XKCD. Now, a lot of you guys probably know this. This is a webcomic that's been going around for like a decade and a half. Uh, I remember reading this years and years ago. Uh, hackers basically breached their form, unfortunately, um, and they stole over 560,000 usernames, emails, IP addresses, and hashed passwords. So if you belong to the forums on XKCD, heads up to you. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Flagstaff Unified School District. Now, I've actually reported on them in the last couple of weeks because of the Pearson data breach. The Pearson data breach is that massive school publisher that's getting school districts up and down the United States infected uh, or rather uh, breached for student data. But Flagstaff had the unfortunate act on the heels of that of getting hit with a ransomware attack so bad that it's shut their actual school system down for about two days and they are still in the process of remediation and hopefully uh, school has resumed uh, this again all in the last week and so if, you have, if you're in Flagstaff and you have kids in the Flagstaff Unified School District, that's why they're not in school. So it looks like uh, maybe they should be starting to question the 12-year-olds into hacking <laughs> in their school district. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Monster.com. That is that huge uh, job site, job seeking site. Now, according to reports, private information on job seekers from 2014 to 2017 uh, were exposed. This includes phone numbers, home addresses, email addresses, and prior work experience. No financial information was included. Now, Monster said it cannot notify these users, interestingly enough, since the exposure occurred on a third party's organization's servers. In other words, probably one of their contractors that was working with their data. This is an unnamed third party, which Monster says they no longer do business with. And this kind of speaks to supply chain hacking and a lot of things that we've seen, especially coming out of the Facebooks of a world where when, when a monster is giving uh, all their information to a third party, let's say to manipulate it for analytics, uh, an advanced app, you know, whatever they're doing, and then that data, you know, just doesn't disappear after that contract expires on their end. And here we are, we have a data breach by monster that wasn't caused by monster. So if you use monster between 2014 and 17, heads up, you got exposed, although not directly by them. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Yves Rocher. Rocher. Again, I apologize to my French viewers. Um, they're a cosmetics firm, uh, or cosmetics giant, rather. Um, they are warning that they've got a data leak that exposed the personal data of millions of their customers and just tons of sensitive information uh, were open to the public. Now, this data exposure uh, basically stems from a database that was left unprotected by a third-party consultant to the firm. So like monster.com, Yves Rocher or Rocher uh, is uh, having the same problem with that. And so if you are a customer of theirs, heads up to you. Moving on, and I found this one, it's in, this, in one, this one's interesting. If you're in the United States, you know what the DMV is. If you are not in the United States, the DMV here is the Department of Motor Vehicles. Basically, this is where we walk in to register our cars, apply for driver's license and all of this. The DMVs in a lot of states have actually been uh, selling personal driver information to thousands of businesses, including private investigators who literally spy on people for profit. That's one of the things that they do. This, this comes according to uh, Motherboard by Vice. Now, this data is sold you know, in various ways from state to state, but it typically includes the citizen's name and address. Uh, in others, it can include their zip code, date of birth, phone number, and address. Now, interestingly enough, the sale of this data is actually legitimate. And the reason why is it stems from a law from, that comes from the 90s called the Driver's Privacy Protection Act. And basically, this uh, is supposed to protect drivers after an actress in the 90s basically had a stalker who paid a private investigator to get her information from a DMV and then promptly showed up at her house and shot her. So... Um, 
this was this was put in there basically to protect citizens but there's a lot of loopholes including private investigators and as a lot of this stuff moves online this becomes a lot more publicly accessible so that is a huge huge issue that we have with the DMV and I would I would think that the uh, laws in the United States need to be uh, written you know written again or updated rather to protect uh, now for online privacy so your local DMV probably mine included is affecting us in this way and finally I'd like to talk about two companies that are basically data mining the bejesus out of us have for years I've done multiple videos on but are now exposing an absolute ton of stuff the first one that we're going to be talking about is Google and we all know that Google is literally data mining us for advertising purposes that is what they do that is how they've made their money more than anything else now this is absolutely fascinating Basically, they're secretly sharing users' personal data with advertisers, which is essentially a breach of Europe's GDPR. This is coming out of Ireland, although it would literally apply anywhere. So in new evidence, and I'm quoting here, in new evidence submitted to Ireland's data watchdog, search engine Brave has claimed that Google is allowing ad tech companies to compile and share personal information from users on over 8.4 million websites. Now, Brave said that and this action amounts to a quote unquote GDPR workaround that circumvents Google's own publicly stated data safeguards. Now, Dr. Johnny Ryan of Brave said that Google allowed advertisers to combine information about him through hidden push pages which are not visible to web users and could lead them more easily to identifying people online. He said that the data compiled by users can be then shared um, by companies without Google's knowledge allowing them to more easily build and keep virtual profiles of Google's user without consent. Google obviously denies this, but but what Dr. Ryan here of Brave, and Brave is actually a web browser that I use and typically recommend uh, because it has all the functionality of Chrome and it actually kills trackers, so you know that's, that's pretty good, um, is simply this. On the back end, unbeknownst to us, as these pages essentially are being loaded, uh, you know, for you know, to get non-technical, they're able to send information back through through a set of subpages that we simply just can't see. That Google can collect, identify, and then sell that to advertisers. So let's say I am, let's say, uh, using Chrome or I'm going through Google to get to, you know, I don't know, a car selling website, and you know, if Google's not supposed to be tracking me, the back end of the communication between, let's say, the Google search result Chrome and this car website could potentially create a link that identifies me to say I'm interested in cars. Uh, you know, how specific it gets, I'm not sure, but that obviously is a, a extreme lack of transparency on Google's side. And quite frankly, I don't think anybody would really doubt that Google wouldn't do this because Google, quite frankly, has done this before. And so heads up to you if you are using that. Uh, my personal combination uh, of using uh, stuff like this is typically the Brave web browser with Start Page or DuckDuckGo as my search engine. Uh, and it keeps me out of the filter bubble and I actually get a whole bunch of really interesting information including stuff for my breaches of the week and a lot of stuff that I talk about in my daily audio and video so heads up to you on Google because I think uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see what uh, Ireland finds with their GDPR uh, investigation on this so thanks to brave on that moving on we're gonna probably we're gonna be talking about what is I think probably the worst offender for data security and data privacy as well and they just proved it this week with two separate articles uh, that a lot of people linked tagged you know put me in and if I didn't mention your name at the beginning I apologize but I had a ton of people alerting me to these and, and how could I not take them to task for this because I think it's absolutely disgusting and the first one we're gonna be talking about that literally came to light this week is on Android's app security. Now, if you're not familiar, these apps are digitally signed by their developers. And I've got notes here, uh, you know, to, to make it a little easier for, for you non-deeply technical people to understand. Now, digital signatures um, are basically created using a private cryptographic key. Now, um, the word private means exactly this. The value of that signature depends on keeping these keys private. And what ended up happening was they are basically Facebook, who has a lot of different private keys, obviously, for different apps and different everything else. They just lost control of one of their app signing keys, and they really don't seem to be caring about this that much. Now, what's happened here is they have an app called Free Basics by Facebook. 
This is an app that basically um, is part of Facebook's 2016 initiative to connect everybody on the planet for free. Um, now, according to researchers and Artem Russa. Rusakovsky and Artem, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name here, he owns the uh, Android Police website. Basically, they are finding this private key used by the Free Basics by Facebook in apps that are not actually owned by Facebook in third-party sites where app uh, Android users can go download apps. Now basically what this means is that because this key was known and started to be replicated, this could have tricked people into installing a malicious update in, of, uh, into their free basics Android app and infecting their phones. Now, Android police said that they notified Facebook about this leaked key earlier in August. Facebook verified the key and said it would address the issue in a new version of the app, but Rusakovsky um, uh, said that be, he tweeted about the issue. Um, they're not going to pay him. They refuse. Uh, Facebook refuses to acknowledge it. He he publicly tweeted about this, and now Facebook is refusing 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 to pay a bug bounty on this, which obviously is not cool. Bug bounties are one of those ways that we can turn bad hackers into good by you know us uh, you know developing let's say a, a workaround, a flaw in a system giving it to the company that has it quietly so that they can update it and then we publish our results. I mean, that's typically how this works. And so by Facebook doing this, obviously it's it's a serious issue. Now, Facebook did quietly release a new version of Facebook uh, Basics in mid-August with a signed key, but it only has about 100,000 downloads or so as of the time I mean, I'm talking to you the, about this and as of the time of that uh, the article was written. And so that is obviously a far cry from this. And so we have a ton of unsecured Amazon, or excuse me, free basics. I'm not going to bring Amazon into this. Uh, free basics by... Uh, my Facebook. I think I was thinking of Amazon Basics just off the top of my head. So uh, that is the first news. And quite frankly, I, I mean, that is critical to app security. Uh, if you are running an Android phone, uh, you know, the best thing that you can possibly do is not allow um, third party app stores and third party downloads from unsigned apps uh, unless it's absolutely necessary for whatever reason. Sticking within the ecosystem of the app store consistently has shown time and time again through research that you're much less susceptible to updating. Now, obviously, researchers and developers have. Uh, you know, uh, obvious reasons to to want to download from everywhere else because we're looking for infections and everything else. But for the average user that's just trying to, you know, live their life day to day, stick with the Play Store from Google if you're on Android and that, that problem goes away. Now, the final thing that we are talking about again, and and this I think speaks to just the 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 asinine culture that Facebook has has developed over the years, and here we are. They may have inadvertently exposed millions of phone numbers related to Facebook accounts. This is according to TechCrunch. Now, an exposed server uh, found online, and I quote, uh, contained over 419 million records over several databases across users' geographies. Excuse me, including 133 million records uh, for Facebook users in the U.S., 18 million for users in the U.K., and interestingly enough, more than 50 million records for users in Vietnam. Now, basically, this was uh, this database was absent password protections, and anyone could have accessed the data if they went looking for it. Now, Facebook issued a statement to USA Today in which it said, and I quote. This data set is old and appears to have information obtained before we made changes last year to remove people's ability to find others using their phone numbers. The data set has been taken down and we have seen no evidence that Facebook accounts were compromised. Again, you know, they're going to say, oh, we don't think the data has ever been used. That's every data breach ever. I just talked about that regarding Poshmark. Now, and changes that they were talking about were addressed as part of Facebook's uh, newsroom post on April 4th of last year, 2018, where they said that they were making changes to safeguard this, obviously coming off the heels of the Cambridge Analytica breaking news story at that time. But here's the thing. Their data sets are so unbelievably massive, probably some of the biggest in the world since they have billions of users. And quite frankly, how could they not be? They clearly don't have full control over how their data is mapped or where it is stored. And so while let's say they're making changes to the primary database that runs absolutely everything you know, for Facebook, they might have duplicates of the data for testing and development. Uh, you know, somebody might have made a copy for you know, another reason, uh, legitimately, I'm not saying illegitimately on Facebook's end, and they just didn't have security in mind. They don't have 
operational control. Now, inevitably, they're going to miss security measures because they're so large. It just simply happens. What ends up happening with a lot of organizations, and as I mentioned earlier, I work with a lot of companies, uh, whether it's MSPs or, or companies that have their own internal IT staff, <clears throat> and complacency and creep inevitably sets in. You don't have good checks. There's oftentimes not a lot of improvement uh, planning or quality control. <clears throat> and so what ends up happening is copies of user databases you know, get exposed or, or you have sensitive information that you're putting somewhere else. I have literally walked in in cybersecurity assessments and I have found Excel files on accountant sheets that have been pulled from master databases that include credit card numbers and other very personally damning information that is out of compliance, whether it's PCI or HIPAA or you know whatever it is we're looking at. Facebook is no exception. When you have tens of thousands of users, tons of developers, I did a video uh, I did a video months ago where literally there was an interview um, with Facebook employees that say, we don't even know how many developers have access to this information or have copied it out. We found over 100,000 uh, basically databases of Facebook information in the hands of third-party developers sitting all across Amazon Web Service S3 buckets from these various developers, one coming out of Mexico City with something like 500 million accounts. This stuff is going to be inevitable. They've had no information control whatsoever since the beginning and as they continue to as they continue to grow and expand they did essentially what their motto is move fast and break things they don't give a damn about their own security and this once again proves it and this isn't the end we are going to find this for years and years and years we have all been exposed they have given our data to countless people. They can't even track that. So how do we possibly expect any of this to be private, secure, or safe? This 419 million users comes on the heels of hundreds of millions of users being exposed by these third parties, which comes on the heels of passwords being stored in plain text, readable by, by 20,000 plus Facebook employees, which comes on the heel of Cambridge Analytica, which comes on the heel of FTC fines that went nowhere, which comes on the heel of everything else. Quite frankly, it's disgusting. And quite frankly, Facebook needs to be taken to task. And so I have literally tried to reach out to Senator Ron Wyden, who appears to be the only senator in Congress right now, in the U.S. Congress, that appears to want to do anything. And so Senator Wyden, if you're listening to this, give me a call. I've got notes, research, videos, everything. I will testify or do whatever it takes because quite frankly, this needs to stop. This is our privacy and they don't care and people don't understand in this age of a lack of patience. And I literally just read something very interesting by, by one of my colleagues here on Facebook you know, about the superficiality of our society and how we don't want to read an end user, end user license agreement. We want to get to the free thing. And as technology moves faster and faster, they're going to break more and more. And I think that is inevitable. And so if you are on Facebook, you have no security. Your data has been breached, mine included, because I have a public presence there as well. It is absolutely sickening to me. And quite frankly, it needs to stop. And so those are your breaches of the week. You were affected. I'm not even going to ask if you weren't, because if you're on Facebook, you were there. And that sucks. And I am sorry, but I just it's starting to boil my, 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 my blood again, and I'm going to do another Mark Zuckerberg in jail or why he should be in jail uh, you know, thing very soon because, quite frankly, uh, it's just it's unconscionable to me. And I will keep ringing this bell until somebody listens. And hopefully, if you guys are watching this, you are listening. So with that, take it for what it's worth. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And I do understand the irony of saying follow me on Facebook. I wish you wouldn't. I'd rather you follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube. You can subscribe there wherever it is. But if you're on Facebook, I understand. Just heads up. And uh, as always, stay safe and stay online and stay private. Take care.